Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? Good. Take your Bibles, turn with me to the last few verses in the Bible. Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to jump down to verses 18 through 21. 18 through 21. Now here we see the fact that God is putting a big period at the end of his book, the Bible. And he's saying there's not going to be any more Bible. Now, that doesn't mean that God isn't going to speak. He isn't going to say things. And, and, you know, I'm sure people are going to write those things down. But when it comes to Bible, when it talks, when we talk about the Word of God, this is all we're getting. This is it. Okay? So, notice what it says. Verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, that if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him all the plagues that are written in this book. Now, wait a minute here. What plagues are written in this book? <laughs> you say, well, it's probably talking about the plagues that fell upon the, uh, the Egyptians. Yeah, you don't remember those, the ten plagues? Yeah, but that's not all the plagues either are there? Uh, there was, you know, there was the fiery serpents that was a, a plague. There was the plague that happened during the latter part of David's reign. Uh, there was a, 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 a plague uh, that uh, came upon uh, yeah, did all kinds of plagues in the Bible. Okay? Uh, when the the ark went down to the Philistines. Remember they had those emeralds, which were probably hemorrhoids or something. And, and uh, there was barrenness and there was all kinds of plagues. I, and it, even like a famine, an earthquake could be considered somewhat of a plague. So what is this talking about? Wow, uh, it would be bad. Okay, so notice what it says. That if any man shall add these things and, and to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You don't want to go there. Don't add to the word of God. Verse 19, and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Does that mean he'll lose his salvation? No. Once you're saved, you're always saved. But what this could easily be referring to is that when a person is born, they're in the book of life because they're a baby. Uh, but then when they come to the knowledge of sin and reject salvation, they're taken out of the book of life. And I, I think this is saying that they're not going to be saved, okay? They're not going to be put back into the book of life like you and I have been, okay? Um, and so he says he should take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, ooh, and from the things which are written in this book, okay? The things that are written in this book. What are written in this book? Well, largely, it is his story. We talk about history. His story is talking about, the, talking about God, to be separated from God eternally. Oh, that's terrible. Um, and, and so all of this, you know, you don't want to add to or subtract from God. Um, and let me just point something out to you. This is something that is very important for preachers to understand. Because a preacher, uh, a pastor, someone who handles the Word of God, had better be sure not to add to the Word of God. Because I've met a lot of preachers out there who will, because they want to control the flock, they will say, well, and the Bible says this, and the Bible doesn't say that. I say, well, you know, the Bible says that your, you know, your hair has to be just this long, or your skirt has to be just this long, or, or and, and they will put some artificial standard on people when the Bible doesn't say that. I remember when I was a kid, um, we, we had a, a Christian school in the first year. It went up to eighth grade, and so there didn't need to be any rules about, you know, facial hair on, on kids. But, um, and, and the administrator had a mustache. But then the second year, <laughs> uh, we went up to the 12th grade. Well, those kids can grow, start to grow some facial hair, and it looks pretty silly. And so the school instituted the rule, no facial hair. Okay, now that was an institutional rule. 
and I asked the administrator who had just shaved off his mustache. I said, so why is that a rule? And all he had to do was say, well, because you guys can't grow good facial hair. And I would have said, yeah, you're right, we can't. <laughs> and or all he would have had to say, well, you know, it's just a rule, live by it. That would have been fine too, because you can do that with an institutional rule. You can make up any rule you want. But he made the mistake of saying, because the Bible says that facial hair is evil. Really? I mean, he just shaved off his mustache. Was he evil before? <laughs> and I said, hey, wait a minute, didn't Jesus have a beard? And he said, well, Jesus was a Jew, and Jew's hair grows very quickly, and he hadn't had time to shave that morning. And when he said that, I thought in my mind, you're an idiot, okay? See, what he had just tried to do is to add to the Word of God. Preachers must never add to the Word of God. But also, they've got to be careful not to take away from the Word of God. And there are a lot of preachers who will not preach a passage. They will not preach a principle. They will not preach the whole counsel of the Word of God, as the Bible says. And in doing that, they are taking away from the Bible. And so whenever we don't proclaim something that we should proclaim, we are taking away from the Bible. And we got to be careful not to do that. Now notice the last two verses. It says, He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Now who was that? It was Jesus Christ. Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I'm sure that was uh, John the Apostle putting that. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. He wanted him to come back. He had seen the beauty of these things. He had seen the wonder of God himself. And he wanted Jesus Christ to return. We should want it even more. Notice that last verse. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that's not only the end of the book of Revelation, it's also the end of the Bible. Hey, what a blessed book we hold in our hands. It is worthy of our life. It is worthy of our memorization. It is worthy of our following. Because the one who wrote it the one who gave it to us loves us. Hey, love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.